You are almost finished with topic one. This is 1-7, practice and problem solving on Envision. Let's get going. I picked three problems to do here. Challenge question. You buy three and 17 hundreds pounds of pears, one and 35 hundreds pounds of grapes, and two and 78 hundreds pounds of peaches. What is your total bill? So these are all multi-step problems, guys. And pears cost $1.09 per pound. Grapes cost $1.19 per pound. Peaches cost 99 cents per pound. So here's what you got to do, guys. First, multi-step problem. <laughs> Bigly. All right, pears. So we have, oh, forgot to write. Okay. So you take the pounds of pears you buy times the uh, unit rate per pound. And we're going to multiply that. Now see this uh, zero times seven says, so I'm gonna add two placeholder zeros, go right to the one. Okay, seven, one. Okay, now I'm gonna add up those. And I gotta write smaller if I wanna fit all this in. Hope you're having a great day today. And now we have uh, two places beyond the decimal here, two places beyond the decimal in a dollar nine. Total four places over. Now, guys, you got to round to the nearest cent. So you see this here, round to the nearest cent as needed. So if you missed it, this is probably why. So round that to the nearest cent. So look, the nearest cent is the hundredths place. And uh, let me show you. When I have three, there's the hundredths place. Okay, this five right here, guys, tells this five it could go to a six. So this one rounds to $3.46. All right, so I'm going to erase this. Ah, $3.46. Is that what I had, guys? I hope so. So um, pears equals $3.46. Now let's do grapes. Grapes. One and thirty five hundredths of a pound times one and nineteen hundredths. Place four zero. Uh, two place over zeros. Add that up. Four places beyond the decimal. And there's the hundred spot, so I'm going to round it. That goes to a dollar sixty one. Dollar sixty one for grapes. Ooh, buddy, dollar sixty one for grapes. So now, let me only erase this. Okay. Now the last one is peaches. We bought a lot of those. They must be in season at $2.78. $2.78. So let's see. This takes an annoying amount of time to do. And what is the unit price? 99 cents. Couldn't they just make it a dollar? That would have been easier, right, guys? Right? 278 times 99 cents. Oh, just make it a dollar. 63 plus 
placeholder zero. And then four places beyond the decimal. Rounding right here. So that two tells the five to stay the same. So $2.75 for good old peaches. All right. Now we got to find the total, guys. So we're adding it up. So you can see we've used multiplication with decimals. We've used adding now with decimals. And that's what this 1 7 practice and problem solving on Envision is helping you to go over kind of reviewing everything and putting um, word problems to it so just take it one step at a time it's overwhelming for me too to see everything you do and then you just take it one step at a time and you can solve it and learn how to solve problems you might not solve these in your everyday life but um, learning how to solve problems in general like this will help you with all the problems you encounter in your life Five, seven, seven, eighty-two. Now there's so much room for air. So if you get this wrong, don't worry. Just go back and check everything that you've done. I mean, I I possibly could get this wrong right now. Don't get discouraged if you did get it wrong. Just um, maybe go back and and see what you missed there. All right, the next one, similar type problem. A student pays for eight and seven tenths pounds of apples with $10. How much change does the student receive? What do you do first to solve the problem? All right, well, first, then blank the number of pounds of apples by the price per pound. What do you think, guys? That's right. We're going to divide. Wait. <coughs> so, let me just read this real quick. <coughs> 8.7 pounds of apples. And we're going to multiply the number of pounds of apples by the price per pound. So, that is right here. And what does that equal? And then we're going to round it to the nearest cent, which is two places behind the decimal. <clears throat> Let's do that. Let's do that right now. And when you multiply with decimals, you don't need to line them up. You actually ignore them until the very end, and then we'll put uh, three places behind the decimal. 72 plus 6, 78. 63 again, and 78. Notice um, notice when it's like 99, and notice the pattern here. You see that pattern? And there's three places behind the decimal. Hey, here's the uh, 100 spot, and that 3 tells that to stay the same. So what they want here is they want the exact answer that you got. And guys, when you buy gas for your car, it goes to the nine thousandths of a dollar. So you, um, it ends up rounding at some point. And now this is the rounded answer. Round it to the nearest cent. You have to do that a lot. And... Look, there'll be fine print about it to round to the nearest cent. Now you'll notice we now have another part to the problem. You see that? Which can get annoying when you have so many parts. What do you do next? All right. All right. So next, the cost of the apples from... Okay, so subtract, because you remember you paid $10. So if you go back up, you pay $10. So subtract the cost of the apples 
from 10 is what I think happens. And if you're confused, I should have clicked here to see what happens. Yeah. So there's the cost of the apples. And we'll see what that is. We'll see what it is, guys. So here we're practicing subtraction with decimals. And you always want to line up those decimals. Notice how 10 is 10.00 to keep everything lined up. And we'll have to borrow. A dollar thirty nine. All right. Ooh, what does this say? What does this say? Let's see. A customer pays three dollars and twenty seven cents for oranges and four dollars and seventy six cents for pears. How many pounds of fruit does the customer buy? Oh my, okay. We can do this, guys. We got it. So three dollars and twenty seven cents for oranges, four dollars and seventy six cents for pears. All right, so what do you do first to solve the problem? What are my choices? Okay, oh boy. I wish they spread this out. <coughs> so what do I do first? Let's see. Find the number of pounds of oranges and the number of pounds of pears purchased by dividing the amount paid for each type of fruit by the price per pound. There are blank pounds of oranges and blank pounds of pears. Okay, let's see what the next one is. Add the number of pounds of oranges purchased to the number of pounds of pears purchased to figure out the total amount of fruit. Let's go back up here and figure out. So that much money in oranges, that much money. How many pounds of fruit does the customer buy? So we got to do it individually. We can't add that together and then because they have different unit rates per pound. Okay, so basically what we're looking for is we have to multiply, no, divide. We have to go 327 divided by the unit rate here. We have to do 476 divided by the unit rate here to solve this problem. By dividing the amount paid for each fruit by the price per pound. Yeah, I think that could be it. Add the number of pounds, no. Find the number of pounds of oranges and the number of pounds of pears purchased by multiplying the amount paid, no. So it's definitely the A for me, okay? A for me. Okay, now, here's what we have to do. There are blank pounds of oranges and blank pounds of pears. All right. Now we're ready. Whew. Let's see what we can do here with this. So what I'm going to do is um, oranges first. And this practices, and we got to go up to see what we got. I'm going to write this down. 327. So you thought there was only two problems here. But it's their multi step, so that's why we only had two. Okay. So four, is that 479? 476. Good thing. 476. I'm going to rewrite it. So 476. Divided by a dollar nineteen. Now we're not allowed a decimal here, guys. So we're going to move the decimal over two places, essentially multiplying by one hundred. And if you do it in the divisor, you have to do it in the dividend. We'll rise that up. One hundred nineteen now goes into four hundred seventy-six. How many times? Well, the secret to doing these are to uh, just patiently. Multiply it by three, then multiply it by two, multiply it by four, just different multiples. Just go off to the side and do that. And uh, it's kind of therapeutic and zen-like, I think. 
357. Let's try four. Let's see if four works, guys. Four, seven. Oh, man. That worked right away, didn't it? Yes. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So, um, four pounds of pears, guys. Ooh, that was good. Four pounds. Uh, come on. Come on now. Four pounds of pears. All right. Now, let's do 327. Oops. 327 divided by... Uh, what was it? Oranges. A dollar nine. Now, we're not allowed a decimal here in this divisor. I'm going to move it over. Move it over here. Let's try a dollar times three. Wait. I was hoping that would work. Double check. 327. Oh, yeah. You know what I did, guys? 3 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. So there should be 2 here. Oh, I made a mistake. That's okay. That's okay. We figured it out. Okay, good job, guys. Good job. 3 pounds there. Man, that's a lot of work for one problem, isn't it? So many parts, so much to do. Oh, yeah, we did it, guys. Well, hey, that was 1-7, practicing problem solving for sixth grade math and vision. My name is Jason Jacobs. Hope, you, hope this video helped you, and I'll see you in topic two. Bye.